Welcome to bonus episode number three, advocating for OER materials. We'll start this episode by noting we all work at different institutions and have varying levels of influence. So for each of us on this call, please describe your role at your institution and how you advocate for OER materials with your administrations or leaders. I am uh, Chris Gilson. I'm an associate professor of history at Northwestern State University. I'm also the coordinator of the uh, Bachelor of Arts in History program at NSU. I've been teaching at NSU for uh, about eight years now, and I've been involved in OER in some capacity for the entirety of that period, having used OER for probably three-fourths of that time. My name is Chris Ancio Jackson. I am the division chair of liberal arts, but also instructor of history here at Louisiana Delta Community College. I've been teaching, I guess, about 12 years uh, throughout the state of Louisiana, mostly at Grambling, but also here at Louisiana Delta. And I became full-time here instructor about eight years ago and a few years later, division chair. Um, as I said in earlier uh, podcasts, I have I usually teach most of all the history all here at Louisiana Delta, American history, world history, Louisiana history. Also, which I haven't mentioned, we're also offering African-American history for the first time in the fall. So that is a great one. And I am uh, hoping to use an OER for that new course as well. And that has opened up these opportunities and what we've been doing with this as well to ensure that that new course that we've never offered here in Louisiana Delta Community College will be using an OER. And hopefully they'll kind of set that standard for all new courses we do offer that it will start off and hopefully stay with an OER to the end. But, you know, in some ways, you know, you kind of have some varying influences, even as a division chair, but in that capacity as an instructor, but also division chair, many times we get so used to using the same resources over and over, and it's hard to make change happen. And that's one of the things that I, even as a division chair, have not been able to make happen as much as I wanted. It would be great that we would all be using OERs, especially throughout this whole school of liberal arts here at Louisiana Delta. But that's not always the easiest thing, you know, especially a lot of the accreditation bodies are wanting everyone to use the same textbook. But and that kind of has given us a nudge to ensure that maybe that is an OER and to push people away from older uh, textbooks as well, but it's a hard push at some point and hopefully in the next few decades we will be all using OERs, but it's not as easy as you may think it should be, but we're trying to see and hopefully we can make some um, changes that will happen in the future, especially with new courses like the African American History course that we're teaching this first time for fall 23. So we'll see. Well, my name is Lisa Namikis, and I am a professor at Baton Rouge Community College. I have taught in Louisiana for about 15 years all around, and then at, at uh, my home institution for, this is my eighth year. So um, I've taught, like Crescencio, I've taught a lot of different histories over the years, but right now my focus is world history, and I do love that, uh, that course the best, I think. Um, so uh, in terms of advocating for OERs, you know, I think it's really important to sort of advocate by uh, using, by becoming, you know, involved in creating and just demonstrating uh, how effective they are. Um, I think we're going to hear some numbers a little bit later on, but just, uh, you know, in terms of showing what OERs can mean for the students um, is probably some of the most persuasive ways of going about it. Um, you know, simply asking everybody to use the same textbook or, you know, to suggest, you know, really strongly that OERs are the only way this institution can go. It seems more like you're twisting arms rather than, you know, really getting people to buy onto the project. And I think that is, um, you know, for, for me more important because, the instructors are going to be more enthusiastic, you know, if there's, if they can be shown the benefits. Um, and I think just highlighting the benefits uh, is the best advocacy. My name is Amelia Brister, and I'm the Director of Library and Learning Resources at Louisiana Delta Community College. And I advocate for OERs um, through encouraging instructors to use them and finding quality resources for instructors when they request them. And by signing on to projects like this um, and encouraging other instructors to join in creating OER, 
pro um, materials just so that they have a say in what's taught in their classrooms. I, I think that's really valuable and important. So, Ms. Brister, what are OER materials and why do you believe they are a good choice for students? So, OER materials are freely and publicly available teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use or repurposing by others. OER can include textbooks, course materials, full courses, modules, streaming videos, tests, software, other materials or techniques that support access to knowledge. And I think that they are a very good choice for students and others can chime in here um, because it makes the material available um, to students on the very first day, the very first minute that the class is open to them. I think they're a great choice for students because they um, help us to the extent possible, at least in this case, and ensure a little bit more equal access to the class um, and remove some barriers to students of, of um, whether they're economic barriers or geographic barriers, whatever it, it may be, um, those barriers that prevent them from getting a good start on the class and ultimately having a good uh, finish in the class. And so I think they're a great choice for that reason, but I think they're also a good choice because they give uh, faculty more control over their class and it's not um, their class doesn't become just a, a one size fits all production of a textbook company. It um, reflects the needs of their students. It reflects the interest and expertise of the faculty. It's flexible. It's editable. Um, and in that way, it encourages uh, more diversity in learning. Professor Jackson, what advice would you give to instructors who want to use OER to help them in winning over their administrations? That is a great question, as we've kind of uh, alluded to a few times. I am also division chair, and I'm one of the division chairs that likes to use OERs, but I know that can be difficult in other schools uh, on particular campuses. One great thing that we at Louisiana Delta Community College that are part of the Louisiana Technical College system is that our system president has made that an initiative that he really wanted us to all use OERs as much as possible. So we don't always see it such a hard sell uh, for administrators on our particular campus throughout the system. But I know for others that may be viewing this, that could be because, you know, many institutions have agreements with their bookstores to purchase you know amount of books and they really don't want to use always use OERs and so that can be a hard sell but like I've said in earlier podcasts you know that availability of having first day access is something that you just cannot really discount with students you know they don't have any barriers other than maybe connectivity problems uh, on that first day and most campuses do have some access to some Wi-Fi that at some point they could come and get the PDF version of it they may have to maybe venture off to the campus when they may be online only but any instructor, I believe, should be able to speak with their dean, division chair, administrator to really offer the benefits. And that's one of the things that that instructor professor will need to do is to really offer the benefits. First day access, being able to access the entire textbook on the first day, uh, being able to really use that textbook on multiple devices, being able to get phone, tablet, everything versus lugging around a big heavy textbook in your uh, uh, book bag all the time. So you just really have to show the benefits and how also the data has shown students using OERs tend to do much better in particular classes. And so you may have some pushback because of the need to fulfill the contract with the bookstore on campus. But when you look at the data and our main goal is to educate students in state of Louisiana, how can you say no? So hopefully that will be all that's needed. But data can't you know, really be used to refute that that's something bad. It has to be something good. So we'll see. You know, speaking of data, Professor Gilson, can you provide us with some data that shows the benefits that Professor Jackson's talking about? Sure. I've been tracking this uh, really my entire time at Northwestern since 2015. So I'm going to go back 
a little bit to the beginning and then uh, work my way to the present. I started using OER for early world history my first semester at NSU in spring 2015. Um, really uh, on accident, as I like to, to tell people, because the course did not have a textbook on order when I took over. And so I had to use the internet and some creativity to, um, to make a course that, was, that lived up to my standards and the standards of the institution and that met the needs of the students. And it worked. And it ended up being my most popular course and the course that students gave me the highest evaluations on and performed the best in. And that gave me a very early indication that OER was worth keeping. And so I kept using it in that course. From 2015 to 2019, this class was entirely OER based. Um, by using OER, I saved my students, uh, 628 students across 14 sections, approximately $79,500 um, at the used textbook price point. That amount accounted for 24% of the textbook cost across all of my classes that I taught during that time. During those four years, my students, if they had actually purchased the textbooks, would have spent over $330,000 on textbooks just for my classes. That when you start to add up those numbers, it becomes, as a faculty member, really unsettling horrifying, actually, when you look at those kind of totals over just a four-year period. Obviously, many students did not or could not purchase a textbook, and so that has its own problems that it brings with it. After a series of changes at the university, I had to return to using a traditional textbook for a few semesters. It was not something I was particularly excited about, and that's one of the reasons I was so enthusiastic about joining this group. Um, I've been using this OER textbook that we created for one year now in early world history. During this time, 175 students in five sections have saved $13,869. That is 57% of the textbook cost across all of the classes that I have taught this year. That is a remarkable savings, one that this project and especially my colleagues on this project and the one that preceded it made possible. If you add up all the savings then that I've generated through OER across all of my world history classes at NSU since I arrived, it totals almost $94,000. Uh, in an age of inflation and debt and numerous economic challenges, I think and I hope that that makes a, a big difference. And I hope it gives everyone listening to this something to reflect on as they make plans for the future as well. Wow. like It's hard to argue with numbers like that. Chris, like, and just for one instructor to be able to say that, that's really, really incredible. Um, so Lewis, our library consortium in the state of Louisiana reports that they have saved students $23.29 million from 2012 to 2022 for 310,000 students in our state. So I would say that if you start with the numbers and put it in a narrative to your administration, to those who are making decisions, it's really hard to argue with student savings such as these. Wow, thank you, Professor Gilson and Ms. Brister. To wrap up episode three, we have one last question and that's going to Professor Namikis. The question is, what additional advice would you give instructors or students to be successful with OER materials? Well, first, uh, to be successful with OER materials, um, my advice would go to instructors. And so, you know, if you're inst an instructor, uh, you know, feel free to especially reach out to your librarians because, uh, you know, even at Louisiana Delta and, you know, at, at all of the colleges here, our librarians are familiar with OERs and they can really speed track you to in the right direction. You know, when I first started looking for OERs, it, there just didn't seem to be a place online where you could just go and open up and find them. You had to search kind of in all these different scattered places. So, you know, that was initially kind of frustrating. So, you know, if you're looking at OERs, then, you know, use use your neighbors, you know, down the hall if you know they use OERs or, you know, your, your librarians, absolutely. Um, and just figure out which OER, uh, it works the best with you. Um, take some time to go through them, uh, look at what resources they come with, maybe even check to see if they've been remixed because sometimes the lists only include the original and then the remixing um, versions, you know, sort of appear housed in 
different places, maybe in a, in a university website or whatever it is, I found some that way. So, you know, to see if they've been remixed and see if there's, you know, different alternatives that way. Um, look at the format. Is that, you know, is it in a good format for your students and for your purpose? Um, we might have different purposes when we're teaching a main, uh, a main term, you know, starting in August through December, or, you know, summer might have some special requirements. Um, you know, are there shortened versions? So just look at your options, um, but again, get the one that fits best, you know, with your teaching and, you know, offers, you know, fresh, fresh material uh, for you. Um, and as far as students go, I think, you know, just initially for students, um, be sure that you can access the textbook right on the first day because, you know, our, as instructors, we're really enthusiastic that, that the students can read the textbook on the first day. We, so we need to encourage them to just be sure that they they can view and see, you know, all the different components of the textbook. Um, and then just it, as far as that goes, encourage the students to put that work, that textbook, especially on multiple devices. So, you know, we might not know what device they're using their the class on, have it on all classes so that, you know, if you're stuck in the doctor's office waiting one day, you might just crack open the textbook like, you know, you used to bring a book with you while you waited for the doctor, right? So you might, you know, be able to fit your work into spaces that you didn't think, like a lot of our students, especially at the community college, they're working. Um, and so just to open up, you know, you open up new times to fit some work into uh, might be a way to keep up better because, um, you know, that's an option that OERs do offer for us too, is that they're flexible, right? Um, so for students, just use that OER, you know, in ways that fit your life, um, you know, figure, you know, figure out where you can use them and, you know, be comfortable asking questions. You know, if you, you need to go to the tech department or, you know, even to the librarian or to your instructor, you know, if are you looking at all of the resources that are available to you? Do you have them? Do you understand, you know, which resources you need to be using? Um, just explore, explore, explore. <laughs> the students would tell them. Um, a lot of our students is, you know, it's a tendency or the course is a lot of material right away to start with. And so, you know, to open up all of it, you know, is a lot. But just to go go back and explore more um, and see what you can do is part of learning and you'll be picking up material along the way. So it's not a waste of time. It saves time in the long run. Right. Um, so use those OERs to save you time, save you money and enjoy the material anywhere and any time you want. This podcast episode has been produced under a CC by NCND license. All episodes in this series are made possible through the efforts of Lisa Naminkas, Christopher Gilson, Crescentio Jackson, Ryan Pierce, and Amelia Brister. Thank you for listening.